Hello fellow space enthusiasts. A slight departure today, but still a video with a space theme running through it. We're going to meander through a few topics, but I hope you enjoy it. The Six Million Dollar Man was a TV show about Colonel Steve Austin that aired in the mid-1970s. Austin was an astronaut at NASA, and throughout the series it featured a lot of space-related footage, such as this clip of him walking on the moon past the US flag. While Austin was making a test flight, the experimental craft he was flying suffered a failure and crashed into the ground. The devastating crash resulted in Austin being given artificial body parts that gave him increased physical powers. In the program, the term bionics was used for these additions, and so Steve Austin became the world's first bionic man. The word bionic is derived from biology and electronics, and it refers to taking natural properties and applying them to mechanical objects. The theory is that the evolution of a living creature over many millennia has resulted in it being at its optimal performance. Bionics seeks to find ways of using the evolution process itself to remove the need to design and test new technology from scratch. A few examples of this transference from biological to mechanical are morphing aircraft wings that took the science of birds wings in various flight conditions and put it into an aircraft such as the sweep wing Grumman F-14 Tomcat. Another example are the hook and loop fasteners commonly referred to as Velcro which came from plant seed burrs after a Swiss engineer examined why they clung onto his clothes after a hunting trip. The show lasted for five series and ran from 1974 to 1978. Before these episodes there were three pilot movies in 1973 that introduced the main character and showed the process of Austin going from an astronaut flying a test flight to the surgery that saved his life through his recuperation and learning to utilize his new bionic powers to his early missions the series had a slightly different opening intro to the pilot films, but both served as a useful recap of this sequence of events at the beginning of every show. For this video, I will use the full intro from the pilot films. The very first thing we see is the word Cyborg. The whole Six Million Dollar Man series is based on the book Cyborg by Martin Kadeen. Kadeen was an aviation writer and used the crash and recovery of Bruce Peterson as his inspiration. Some accounts state that KD was actually present and witnessed the crash for himself. In the episode, Deadly Countdown, KD makes a cameo appearance. And it flies where we say it flies. Cyborg is derived from the term cybernetic organism. What follows is an explanation of what cyborg means. Next we have the famous quote by Neil Armstrong, maybe to signify that the world's first bionic man was a giant leap forward in the progress of mankind. Then we have a shot taken by one of the chase aircraft of the experimental Northrop HL-10 lifting body under the wing of its P-52 carrier aircraft. When I listen to this, I hear Roger 008 holding steady this refers to the Boeing Stratofortress that had the tail code 520008. This particular B-52 entered service with NASA in June 1959 and was used on numerous different projects such as the X-15 test flights until its retirement in December 2004. During the recording of this sequence, Lee Majors wore a pilot's oxygen mask with a microphone to get an authentic sound. The series intro actually started at this point with the sweeping radar screen and the dramatic opening beats. Next we hear, we have separation and we see footage of the HL-10 lifting body being released. A lifting body is a craft that uses the shape of its body to achieve lift instead of using conventional wings. The lack of a large pair of wings reduces drag and this is advantageous at high speeds but conversely this leads to a lack of stability at low speeds. The lack of wings is also an advantage because of the friction they would encounter and the resulting heat experienced during re-entry. The lifting body program was designed to test craft that could return from space and land on a runway. During this testing the HL-10 would attain an altitude of 90,030 feet and reach a speed of 1,228 miles per hour. 
probably the most aesthetically pleasing design was that of the Martin Marietta X-24B, the reincarnation of the X-24A. One of the pilots of the X-24B was US Air Force test pilot Francis Richard Dick Scobie, who went on to be a NASA astronaut. He would ironically be killed on his final flight in a craft with no wings. He was, of course, the commander of 51L. Following the explosion, his friend and fellow astronaut Robert Overmeyer stated his belief that Scobie had survived the explosion that ripped Challenger away from the external tank at 46,000 feet. As incredible as it may seem that anyone could survive an explosion powerful enough to be seen from space, as can be seen in this GOES image, it may have been possible. A July 1986 NASA report stated that the forces to which the crew were exposed during orbiter breakup were probably not sufficient to cause death or serious injury. This image shows that a wing, the shuttle's fuselage with its main engine still smoking, and the crew cabin were blown free from the main explosion. The crew most likely lost consciousness in the following ballistic arc up to 65,000 feet and then down to an impact with the ocean. Overmeyer was of the belief that his friend would have fought for any and every edge to survive. He flew that ship without wings all the way down. Overmeyer, who flew on two shuttle missions, was himself killed during a test flight of a VK-30 pusher propeller own built aircraft when the aircraft departed controlled flight. The space shuttle did benefit from the testing done during the lifting body programs, but it never did shake off the difficulty of control at lower speeds. As John Young would point out when he said it had the aerodynamics of a lead safe thrown out of a window, albeit with its door open. The craft shown here is the Northrop M2F2. The M stood for manned and the F stood for flight because some variants were used for ground tests only. Its predecessor, the M2F1, was a prototype craft released not from a B-52 but from a tow rope behind a tow plane. When put side by side, the HL-10, shown at the beginning of the intro, and the M2F2, shown during the crash, did have some differences. Most notably, the extra vertical tail fin on the HL-10. In a later episode titled The Deadly Replay, Austin goes back to the research centre and flies the HL-10 again. We learn that the crash was not caused by a malfunction or pilot error, but as a result of sabotage. As the saboteurs try again to crash the HL-10, Austin uses his bionic strength to land safely. The crash footage comes from the 10th of May 1967 crash of Bruce Peterson. Peterson was a NASA research pilot who worked on a number of projects one of which was the proposed runway touchdown of the Gemini spacecraft using a wing. Although he was remembered for the later crash, Peterson did survive an earlier crash during a ground tow test for the Gemini Regala wing proposal. The tow test consisted of the test craft being towed across the ground so that the pilot could familiarise himself with the controls and test the aerodynamics of the craft. Unfortunately, on one occasion, the craft crashed from a height of around 10 feet, but Peterson was OK. He is, of course, mostly remembered for the crash that appeared in the opening sequence that nearly deprived him of the 39 years of his life that he went on to live. It is interesting to compare Austin's voice comms with those of Peterson's during the real emergency. Now, Chopper's gonna get me, I'm afraid. No, he's all right. You're okay. You're clear. Watch your gear, Bruce. Okay, he landed around his gear. Get the fire truck out. The way in which Peterson says... That chopper's going to hit me, I'm afraid, exemplifies the difference between fictional drama and the cool, measured, unflappable nature of a test pilot. One account states that Peterson came very close to making it down safely. Unfortunately, the descending landing gear had not locked into place, and so either it or the open gear door struck the ground at about 250 miles per hour, sending the craft tumbling over the dry lake bed of the California desert. The M2F2 tumbled over six times, during which the canopy broke, and Peterson's face came into contact with the ground. Probably more than any other TV show intro, this one contains more memorable quotes than any other. Steve Austin, astronaut, a man barely alive. Although not quite as badly injured as Steve Austin, Peterson did not walk away from this crash, as some people claim, because he was unconscious. He suffered a fractured skull and a broken hand, 
and as a result of his face hitting the ground, he had to have reconstructive facial plastic surgery. Gentlemen, we can rebuild him. We have the technology. We have the capability to make the world's first bionic man. Steve Austin will be that man. During the crash, Peterson suffered injuries that, due to a later infection, led to him losing his right eye, meaning that he had to wear an eye patch. He would survive to fly another day, as would the wrecked craft, which would be rebuilt and fly under the designation the M2 F3. One of the obvious differences between the M2 F2 and the M2 F3 is the addition of a third vertical tail fin, which was added to eliminate the danger of pilot induced oscillation. Better than he was before. Better, stronger, faster. The leg seen during the operation to save him was a prop originally used in the Clint Eastwood film The Beguiled, where it was used during the gruesome amputation scene. And then it finishes with that iconic music that signalled the start of yet another adventure. There would be a few later TV specials made, but Steve Austin has long since retired. Yeah, I really miss him. The same cannot be said of the lifting body concept. Although the space shuttle has long since been retired, it is certainly not an out-of-fashion model of returning to Earth, because the Chinese have only just revealed their plans to use their cargo space shuttle to take supplies to their space station. So the lifting body concept lives on. I hope you have found this video full of interesting information. If so, think about subscribing for future videos. And thanks for watching. Hey, that's great.